Iran says it has stopped oil exports to French and British companies. The country's oil ministry says Tehran has other customers uh, which it can sell its crude to. The Islamic Republic aims to preempt an EU oil embargo that's set to come into force in July. Well, let's discuss the implications of this with uh, historian Webster Tarpley. He's in Washington, D.C., and just returned from Tehran. Uh, what is the message Iran wants to send by today's move? Why targeting Britain and France and excluding the more fragile economies in the EU, such as Greece? Well, I think the, the lesson is, first of all, that economic sanctions are a game that two can play, uh, and turnabout is fair play in international uh, affairs. The European Commission and the, the relevant powers have been um, making a big noise over the past couple of weeks about how they're going to embargo and boycott all Iranian oil starting on July 1st. Well, uh, it's pretty obvious the Iranians decided not to wait around until July 1st, and if this report is correct, which it seems to be, they've decided to uh, to impose their own embargo boycott on the offending powers. And they're starting with the, the two biggest imperialist bullies on the schoolyard, the British and the French, who are now so weak that they can only act together. They're a kind of imperialist bicycle built for two. So they get slammed first. They haven't had time to carefully arrange the uh, uh, fallback options and the alternative sources of oil. So this is uh, a little bit of a surprise to them. It was mooted last week. In other words, this step was pretty much announced by the Iranians. And they also included the Netherlands, Greece, Portugal, Spain, and Italy on the list of those who might follow. So those are other countries that might, might be uh, embargoed by the Iranian side. Now, the way that the economy of Iranian oil works is that the biggest customers are, of course, China, Japan, India, and Italy. Uh, China has said in very vague terms that they might go along with the U.S. Uh, demand that they stop buying Iranian oil, but I don't think this is widely believed. India has stood out as a country that says they will continue to take uh, Iranian oil in, in large amounts. And there have been contacts just, just last week when I was in Tehran. There were Indian representatives there that were also doing that. Japan... Hard to say, maybe more likely to go with the U.S. Italy will be an interesting question. Whether that country on, on the uh, verge of some kind of uh, economic chasm is going to be willing to sacrifice itself for this obsession of the ruling elites here in Washington, D.C. Maybe not. But, but Webster, with Iran just targeting those EU countries at the moment, won't it actually have an impact on oil prices worldwide, something which the world economy really doesn't want at the moment? So Iran is having a much bigger impact on other countries, too. Well, if the world economy doesn't want that, they should tell Obama, Clinton, Susan Rice, Panetta, and this feckless gang of, uh, of would-be imperialists we have here, tell them to, to cool it, to, to stop it, because what they're doing is, is heating up a situation. And I, but, I have to say, it is a very serious situation. But, what but, we're seeing uh, now... Sure, very serious. And isn't that why sanctions are aiming to stop Iran enriching uranium? Uh, will those sanctions not work then? They, they, they cannot work in the sense that uh, the, the Iranians uh, have been under sanctions for 30 years. When I was in Iran, you see a lot of prosperity, a lot of economic activity. There had been a shock in January as a result of the very stringent uh, sort of secondary boycott sanctions that the U.S. had put in. But the Iranians will tell you they have lived under U.S. sanctions for 30 years. They know how to to survive in such a situation. I didn't see any evidence of hardships, although people said that certain key prices had gone up. The bigger issue, I think, is the slide towards war. And I, this we have to take very seriously. What we're seeing now with the reckless and irresponsible statements of the Israeli leaders, these feckless Americans who are sort of chiming in, is a region sliding towards war. And that would be then, I think, uh, possibly a general war. There is really only one international leader with the stature and the authority to take a stand on this and maybe uh, come up with a proposal an initiative to, to stop the slide towards war. That is Vladimir Putin. And I, I think the world right now is looking to, uh, to Prime Minister Putin and soon to be President Putin in his second term to do something to, to, to stop this slide. We seem to be in some kind of a July, August 1914 situation, uh, and we need to get out of it. And I think really only Russia is, is the power that has the ability to do that. And I hope this, this, this will occur. Otherwise, we look at Obama, 
Obama may not want war, but he's too feckless to avoid it. His administration is full of warmongers. We look across at Cameron, Sarkozy, the Europeans. These, again, are either feckless or uh, devotees of the war party. A very, very dangerous combination. Well, fresh from a visit to Tehran, historian Webster Tarpley, thanks very much indeed for your thoughts Thank right you, here Bill. on RT. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Coming up in 